Hello, this is Devabrata and you are watching Chemistry 12. Before the break, I had asked you which functional group is present in camphor. I am sure you must have found the answer. If you haven't, here it is. The pleasant smell that camphor gives out can be your clue. Yes, camphor has carbonyl group. The chemical formula of camphor is C10H16O. Outside the chemical world, camphor is a waxy, white or transparent solid with a strong aromatic odor. I hope you have followed what we have discussed so far. We learnt about the physical properties of aldehydes and ketones. Now let's discuss their chemical properties. Since aldehydes and ketones both possess the carbonyl functional group, they show a large number of common reactions. Both aldehydes and ketones undergo nucleophilic addition reactions. Now, what are nucleophilic addition reactions? Chemically speaking, in a nucleophilic addition reaction, a nucleophile adds on to a molecule resulting in the cleavage of a pi bond. Now, if we compare the relative reactivities of aldehydes and ketones towards nucleophilic addition reaction, we find that aldehydes are more reactive than ketones. Why is it so? Two reasons. Electron releasing inductive effect, that is, plus I effect and steric effect. Let us first study inductive effect. In an aldehyde, there is only one alkyl group, whereas in ketones, there are two alkyl groups. Thus, the electron releasing inductive effect of two alkyl groups in ketones is more than that of aldehydes. So, in a ketone, the electron density on the carbon atom of the carbonyl group is more than that of aldehydes. Likewise, the decrease in magnitude of positive charge on the carbon is more in case of ketones. Hence, a ketone is less susceptible to nucleophilic attack than aldehydes. Wasn't that easy? Now, let's study the second reason behind the higher reactivity of aldehydes over ketones, that is, the steric effect. In ketones, two bulky alkyl groups are present, whereas in aldehydes, only one alkyl group is present. So, in ketones, the presence of two bulky alkyl groups hinders the approach of the nucleophile to the carbonyl carbon, while in aldehydes, the nucleophile is able to approach the carbonyl carbon more easily. So, according to both the effects, aldehydes are more reactive towards nucleophilic addition reactions than ketones. I am sure you have got it. Let us get more clarity by taking an example. The reaction of aldehydes and ketones with hydrogen cyanide. This reaction occurs very slowly. So, it is catalyzed by a base. Let us see how this reaction occurs. In the first step, the nucleophile cyanide ion is generated by the reaction of the base with hydrogen cyanide. This cyanide ion then attacks the positively polarized carbon of the carbonyl group to form an intermediate. This intermediate then reacts with H plus ion to form cyanohydrine. An important point to remember is that aldehydes and ketones can also undergo nucleophilic addition reaction with the elimination of water molecule. Addition of ammonia and its derivatives 
to the carbonyl compounds takes place by this mechanism. For example, aldehydes and ketones react with ammonia derivative 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine to form 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazone. This product is also known as 2,4-DNP derivative. These 2,4-DNP derivatives are yellow, orange or red solids. This test is very important in identifying aldehydes and ketones in a laboratory. Let us see how the test is performed. Take about 3 ml of 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine reagent in a test tube. Add small quantity of organic compound to it. Shake it well. Appearance of an orange or yellow colored solid indicates the presence of aldehyde or ketone. Now for the warning. When you are doing this experiment, be careful not to add water because if you do so, the reagent itself will precipitate out in excess of water. If the organic compound you want to test is solid, dissolve it in alcohol and use that solution. Wasn't that simple? Remember, learning is doing and asking for more. We have a caller who has a question. Let's find out who is on the line. Is there any test which can be performed in the lab to distinguish between an aldehyde and a ketone? That was a very interesting question. The answer is yes. The test is Felling's test. This test is used to identify whether the given organic compound is an aldehyde or a ketone. Let us understand it in detail. For performing this test in the lab, mix equal amounts of felling solution A and felling solution B. In a test tube, take 2 ml of the organic compound. Add 1 ml of felling solution to the test tube. Warm the contents in a water bath for some time. If you see a red precipitate, the organic compound is an aldehyde. Ketones do not give positive felling test. The reason for this is that Aldehydes can be oxidized with mild oxidizing agents like Felling's reagent. But ketones are generally oxidized with strong oxidizing agents at high temperatures. This is because aldehydes have a hydrogen atom attached to the carbonyl group. This hydrogen atom can be easily converted to OH group without undergoing the cleavage of any other bond. On the other hand, ketones undergo cleavage of carbon-carbon bonds on oxidation. A mixture of carboxylic acids is formed, each of which has lesser number of carbon atoms than the parent ketone. In case of cleavage of unsymmetrical ketones, Popoff's rule is followed. According to this rule, the keto group prefers to stay with the smaller alkyl group. For example, the oxidation of hexane 2 ohm forms ethanoic acid and butanoic acid. Here, the keto group stays with methyl group and not butyl group. I am sure Today's episode has helped you clear your concepts and will also help you study better for exams. For more chemistry, log on to www.topperlearning.com. Let us take a small break now, but do not go away. 
because coming up after the break is exam decoding.